Charles Purcell presents. And now it's time for Expert Talk with advice experts Bob and Stan. Get out of here! I swear to God, it came right out of my mouth. We're on the air. Well, I always wonder what that big flashing red light. Hi there, we're Bob <laughs> and Stan. With advice for you on any subject: personal, financial, relationships, health, science, taking technology, care of your pets, politics, politics car repair, whatever. Gardening, whatever. Who's this? Hi, this is Helen from Los Banos, California. Los Banos, that's the San Joaquin Valley, right? Hey, don't tell me. I bet it's hot there, right? Yeah, it's pretty hot. And dry. There's no water there. Well, no, not much rainfall, but we've got quite a big reservoir. Here, just to ah, the from the French Reservoir to Reserve. Yeah, very impressive. What are you, French Major well, Helen? Is that where the California Aqueduct is fed? Well, ah, yeah, I guess the it California runs Aqueduct here. System, a marvel of modern engineering. Well, here we go. Transforming Central California, a virtual <laughs> desert, into the biggest cash producer of dairy and produce hey, in the country. You know, you're right. What's with California? They have to have it all. They weren't satisfied with being number one in like no, everything else. No, that wasn't good enough for them. They just had to be number one in agriculture too. <laughs> God forbid, little insignificant Wisconsin should produce more dairy. They had to go drain every last drop of available water so they could farm the, the desert. desert. What do we got here? Desert? What, are we going to sell native artifacts for roadside stands? I don't think so. We'll just build a 400-mile cement ditch and take the water from wherever we please. Yeah, we're not going to stop there. We'll just drain the Colorado River dry so we can gas and go all the way from Santa Monica to freaking Las we'll, Vegas. We'll turn the Mojave Desert into the Mojave Mega Mall Retail Entertainment Industrial Condo Development Amusement and Water Slide Thrill Park. Ah, I feel better getting that off my chest. Ah, yeah, me too. Now, Helen, what can we do for you? Your problem is uh, you're retaining water. Is that right? <laughs> that's not what she said, you dummy. <laughs> I thought that's what she said. <laughs> You could see that Anita Hill was not a real team player, but more someone who looked out for herself. You could see this even in her relationships with others at the office. Participate in she some mostly of the girl kept talk. to herself, although she, she would occasionally herself, participate in some of the girl she talk among the women at the office. Some of the girl talk and I have some of the girl talk. I don't recall talk. I want the chance to talk to you. Innocent about that either. You ladies. You see, Senator, that was the Anita Hill that we all knew and we worked. Schizophrenic. And that's why delusion her on Friday was so shocking. So I didn't start this argument, but I'm not no, going to back away from it. So sick. No, so usually morning. when it benefits her. The Anita Hill, I knew and worked with, totally Women different in personality. General. Women in general. Women in general. The Anita Hill I knew before was nobody's victim. Were those traits present in the past, Tom? His beloved wife, Crystal, and their evil archenemy, Alexis. He's an awful caring man. Every sad day for the civil liberties of this country. This argument, but I'm not going to back away from it. He's very warm and friendly. Ambitious. Remember with any specificity. All of the engineers do that great. Yes. But like a father, he commands. In that capacity, I have been privy 
to the most intimate details of his life. He was very Family life, we have reached a sad How day for the civil liberties of this country. Will the opponent's goal? Was that what I heard? I, I think yeah, I'm about to right. think. That's, that's fine. You can do it on full time and time. This family is not going to have a sad day. Take care oh, we don't want to limit them. You didn't limit this morning. You didn't limit all day long. They were your favor. Yes, sir, and our favor. The entire civil liberties of this country. Mary Silver. Hi, Mary. Well, hello, Wes. It's so lovely to speak with you again. How are things in Seabrook today? Oh, well, you know, Seabrook is just outside the Washington, D.C. Beltway, so the weekend can't come soon enough for us. All, all the goings-on down there in the capital, it, it can be very trying. I imagine it can. Our listeners may not be aware of the fact, Mary, that your husband is a U.S. senator. Oh, well, th that's right. I don't like to mention his name, but <laughs> that's right. And you do a great deal of entertaining, I would oh, imagine. Oh, yes. I, I, I'm the delightful hostess, after all. <laughs> that you are, Mary. Now, I understand you have a recipe a for us. hostess, that's me. I have a master's degree in urban planning uh, uh -huh. and eight years' experience in public service myself, but, you know, hey, someone's got to what? plan tonight's party for the tire guys, the, oh, right? The, the tire guys? <laughs> oh, Frank's got some corporate cabal of tire manufacturers ready to fork over a big check. I, oh, so I you're know. hosting a fundraiser. Well, that sounds exciting. I understand you have a special recipe to share with us. the whole deal is riding on my potato puffies. The potato puffies. Sounds delicious, Mary. Tires, cars. These guys would have the whole country paved over if they could. So you start with potatoes, I'm guessing. What? The potato puffies. That's the recipe you have oh, for us right. this week? Oh, God, look at the time. Consuelo, uh, call the caterer. We need potato puffies for 18. So what? Uh, no, are they coming to all? Uh, all right, potato puffies for 20 then. Uh, Mary? Uh, better I, make it 24. The Costa Rican ambassador eats like a we'll, horse. We'll let you go, Mary. We'll talk to you next week. Mary Silver, the delightful hostess. it up at a really cool job. Andy and Barney and Opie and B, Blue Ribbon Pickles, a skeleton key. Black and white friends, black and white voices, black and white rules. Black and white choices Ricky and Lucy and Ethel and Fred Cigarette smoke coming out of their heads Wally and Beaver, a mom and a dad Living the life we wish we had had Black and white days Black and white seasons 
Black and white rhymes Black and white reason The blood is red And the sky is blue Except when it's got That pink yellow hue For a big storm that's bringing a change To the color and feel of our home on the range So many colors and so many shades So many choices and so many ways it all right or to do it all wrong to write what is possible into this song black and white dreams black and white stories black and white tales of black and white glory Della and dirty old Paul listening to jazz and having it all. Wanna be them, but gotta be me and paint with all the colors I see. Cause blood is red and the sky is blue. Except when it's got that pink yellow hue For a big storm that's bringing a change To the color and feel of our home on the range Too many colors and too many shades, too many choices and too many ways. To make it all right or to do it all wrong, to write what's impossible into this song. Black and white friends, black and white voices, black and white rooms. Black and white choices Excuse me, is, uh, is anyone sitting here? No, man, have a seat. Thanks. They're, they're pretty busy today. Yeah. Would you... Uh... Oh, you need a napkin? Yeah, thanks. Here you go, man. Uh, thanks. You need a stirrer? Uh, a what? A stirrer. Oh, uh, no, I'm good. Thanks. They really ought to ban these plastic stirrers. How's that? I say they should ban these plastic stirrers. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's really no need for them, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, shit. Here we go. What the? Under the table. Come on. Keep on your belly. Follow me. Come on. Come on, behind these dumpsters. Man, lucky we were sitting next to that back exit. That's my regular spot. I always sit at that table. The gunfire stopped. You always sit at that table? Yeah. Because it's next to the exit? Yeah. <laughs> well, it sure paid off today. What are the odds? The odds? Actually pretty good. What do you mean? I mean those shots. They were for me. For you? Yeah, man. Somebody's trying to kill you? Yeah, man. Why? I don't know. I'm just one of those guys. One of what guys? Look out! Incoming! <coughs> you okay, man? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Look out! What? That dumpster! It's gonna land on us! Oh! Jesus, that was close. Come on, man. Let's get back out on the street where it's busy. We'll get lost in the crowd. So, what did you mean when you said they're trying to kill you because you're just one of those guys? I don't know. One of those guys, you know. A guy who's always escaping death. Always escaping death? Yeah. What do you mean, always? Just always. Like how often? I don't know. It comes and goes. Sometimes every couple of minutes. Wait, wait you, you escape death every couple of minutes? I, I don't think that's a one of those guys kind of thing. That, that, that's not a thing. Well, whatever. Here, let's duck in here for a while. I never got to finish my coffee. Hello, gentlemen. Take your order. Uh, yeah, man. I'll have a plain coffee. What are you having? Hmm? What? What were you having back at the other place? Oh, um, ice chai? Ice chai. Small or large? Small or large. Um, small is okay. No, no, man, you can, you can get a large. No. It's on me. Oh, uh, thanks. Small is fine. Small. Name? Uh, name, uh, uh Jeremy. That'll be 1278. Here you go, keep the change. Thanks. You can have a seat. We'll bring it out to you. Thanks, man. You know, you shouldn't have to be escaping death every couple of minutes. I don't know. That's just who I am. I'm just that guy. I mean, everybody knows somebody like me, right? Everybody's got somebody in their family or in their circle of friends who's, you know, in peril half the time. No, that's what I'm saying. This is not normal. You shouldn't just accept this. Hey, other people have it tougher than me. I don't like to complain. No, no, seriously. You should complain. This isn't right. Hey, man, I appreciate your concern, but, uh, um... What? What are you looking at? That barista. The guy who took our order? Yeah. What about him? He just looked at us funny. What do you mean, funny? I've seen that look before. Well, what Quiet. Are you... Here he comes. Whatever you do, do not drink your chai. What? Here you go, gentlemen. Thanks, man. Will there be anything else? We got some fresh biscotti. No, thanks, man. Well, all right, then. Enjoy. Okay. He's not looking. Hand me that flower behind you. What? That little flower in that little vase behind you on the shelf. This? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. What do you want with it? I'm just going to conduct a little test. You're going to drop it in your coffee? Yeah. Whoa. Just what I thought. Fried to a crisp. There's a good chance yours is fixed, too. What do we do? Stay calm. Here, use a straw. Pretend to drink 
your drink, but don't let it hit your lips. When I give the signal, you hit the floor. What signal? Believe me, you'll know. Hey, what's that? What does it look like? It looks like a f***ing gun. Well, of course it's a f***ing gun. But just shut up and do as I say, and we'll be okay. Hey, what's this we stuff? I thought they were after you. Sorry, man. We're together now. You're in on this now. But shut up. Shut up. All right, everybody hit the floor. Just nobody move, and nobody will get hurt. Come on, man. What? Come on, we're getting out of here. No thanks, no thanks. I'll just, I'll just stay here. No man, they already think you're with me. If I leave you here, I can't protect you. All right, we're backing out of here. Nobody move unless you want to get blown away. Come on, man. Who's this they who thinks we're together? Shut up, man. Come on, let's go. Open the door. Run for it. Ah! Sorry, man, we're taking your car. Hey, wait a minute, give me back those keys. Sorry, brother, grab that car. What? Go on, get behind the wheel. What? Get in, get in. Drive, drive. What happened? What happened? The barista got me. He shot you? No, he got me with a blow dart in the back of the neck. Oh, man, yep, here it is. Poisoned. Poison? Hey, wait, wait, don't taste it. Yep, just what I thought. I've been shot with this before. Wait, you've been shot with a poison dart before? Yep, if this is what I think it is, I've got less than five minutes to take the antidote. So where do we find the antidote? The only place I know is at my house. Wait, you you keep the antidote in your house? I told you, I've been shot with this before. I know, I know, you've been poison blow darted before, I know. So, so where do you live? In Bayview. River West to Bayview in five minutes. In the middle of the day? It's my only chance, man. Okay, okay, okay. So who's after you anyway? I don't know. Why do they want you dead? I don't know. But you're near death like several times a day. (laughs) Yeah. How long has this been going on? As long as I can remember. And you're fine with it? Hey, you gotta live life. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I think maybe... Uh, I think maybe I'd try to do something about it, you know? Yeah, I've learned to live with it. And other people seem to like it. Well, like it? Yeah, everybody around me always seems pretty amped up, you know? Pretty entertained. Huh, <laughs> well... Amped up, maybe. I I don't know about entertained. No, no, I mean it. I think they really get off on it. I see the excitement in their eyes. So, this is your role in life. To entertain us by escaping death on a regular basis. Yep, you said it right. It's my role in life. I'm a big damn show. So be it. All right, then. Let's get you back to Bayview. The show must go on. <laughs> That's right, man. The show must go on. Hit it! Oh, man. Woo-hoo!
It's time for Expert Talk. Today we're joined by travel expert and host of his own public radio program, This American Tourist. Here's rich American tourist, Idler. Hi, Rich. Hi, Peter. I've got the greatest tip for you today. The next time you or your listeners are in Kauai, well, we found the most yummy little, oh, kind of a nouveau deli with hummus to die for. Mmm, hummus. To die for. And the atmosphere? Plants everywhere and soft focused lighting. Just delicious. We just loved it. We could have stayed there for hours except the manager kicked us out. You got kicked out? Can you believe that? Kicked us right out. Why? Well, Joy and I. Your lovely wife. Yes. We were playing, look, there's so-and-so. Have you ever played that one? I don't think so. Oh, it's so much fun. You look for passers-by or people at other tables who look like celebrities, and then you say, oh, look, there's Jason Robards, or oh, look, there's Kitty Carlisle, or whatever. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh -huh. Well, okay. I look a table over and see an older gentleman with his wife, and I say to Joy, look, there's Walter Cronkite. And Joy looks over, and we laugh. And then I hear the wife talking very loudly to the husband. I guess he was hard of hearing. And she's cutting his meat, and she says, Walter, would you like ketchup? So, of course, Joy and I are beside ourselves pointing and laughing because we realized it really was, was Walter, Walter Cronkite. Cronkite. <laughs> and the manager told us we were done, and then threw us out. Well, Mrs. Cronkite smiled at us. I think she was going to invite us over. Walter never really looked up from his play. Well, that's too bad. Apparently, you just can't have fun in public anymore. You know, I fight against that. When do people get so stuffy? You laugh too loud in a restaurant or at Wimbledon or at a Buddhist temple, and boy, you get such looks from people. There he is, Rich, American tourist idler. Thanks for sharing your travel adventures with us, Rich. Check out our website. This episode of Charles Burcell Presents is available right now wherever you find your podcasts. Or go to the website charlesbursell.com for the full archive and all the other series in the podcast family. Follow, comment, and contact me on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks to our flagship station, Riverwest Radio, riverwestradio.com. Theme music composed and performed by Peter Donalds. From the New Arts and Media Studios in Milwaukee, I'm Charles Bursell.